Stop snickering, Peter. <laughs> I'm still in my prime, and you know what? Okay, let's do this. I used to be able to do the hoop snake. Okay. <laughs> the hoop snake is, is when you can blow yourself, right? You can actually, it's, it's a bit athletic, right? But it's, it's, it's a way to pass the time. So if you can put a cock in your own mouth, then this this that's called the hoop snake. Anyway, anyway, I know it's a radio. Duh. Ah, okay. What W? Uh, yeah. Uh, what's what's the call letters again? K A L X. Come on. K L X. Come on. Come on. K L X. Come, come on, Peter. Tell me about the K L X. K A Y X. K L A X. Berkeley. Wait, wait. Okay. I got K A L X. Berkeley. K A L S. K K A L X. Okay, you got it. K A L X. Berkeley. Tell me again. K A L X. K A L X. Yes. Okay. One, two, three. K A L X. Berkeley. Roger Dodger. <laughs>
Just all this. And then and then Weber did. And I'm then just Weber tall. Did. That's all. And then, so one day Weber comes to uh, New York in the May May of May of '63, um, and I think, oh my God, who's this guy? Oh my God! Uh, I, I thought it, it looked like my my long lost brother. Or I have a I have a brother, but he looked like 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 the lost one because the other brother I have has actually never never been lost. But I thought it's my lost brother. <laughs> then we well let's you know play some you know what kind of music do you play? Oh let's see here. Okay. Let's play some. And the first thing we ever played together sounded really really great. It was just like bang right in the pocket. And uh, we played together for three days because we were. I wonder why we're I, I forget exactly why we played for three days straight. Ben's Drex inhalers. <laughs> No, it was it was it was Chris it was Crystal Meth. Here's a tune I made up. Mm. It's a song called Take Me Back to Random Canyon. Take me back to Random Canyon where the griffin's always riffing and the unicorn is horny in spring. Well, Lenny Bruce said that if you get a, a square stoned, what you have is a stoned square. I don't think they ever got it. I don't think the, uh, you know, the, the unwashed ever really understood what the rounders were about. Holy Motor rounders were doing something that seemed really dangerous. This was to play this style of music in an irreverent way, doing it with a sense of humor so that a lyric that might not have made sense or have been unintelligible on the regular record, I always had the fe feeling that Peter Stanfell was just looking at these things and going, oh, well, I can't understand that, so I'll make a different verse up. And it'll be something about psychedelic chickens or, or, or something that m means something to me. And the psychedelic sage keeps the cattle in a rage and the changing This is the very first Holy Modal Runner album recorded the day before President Kennedy got shot. It's a damn nice record. It was totally ignored by everyone. There was one review for it in uh, Sing Out in which the reviewer said that we were wrong and we were bad and we weren't doing it right and our attitude was totally, totally erroneous. Oh, this is the first place that the word psychedelic was used in an album. It was important for me, <laughs> to me, to have this happen back then because uh, well, I believe, like a bunch of other people, that if Kennedy and Khrushchev only took some LSD together, we would have world peace forever. Hallucinations <laughs> uh, make people delusional. I think I first heard the rounders probably as part of the fogs, although at the time I didn't realize I was hearing the rounders. Do you like boobs a lot? We were a band, a band, because we're from New York, who were, um, who would sing whatever we wanted, and we were uh, humorous, radical, political, and poetic. And we were just one, we were just wonderful. We started rehearsing in my bookstore, and there, a lot of people start coming to the rehearsals, because, you know, we were. We were all wild and crazy, so and young. And Stamfel and Weber came to some of those. I had met uh, Steve Weber, I knew, from 1961. He would play a kind of spacey, picky, sort of sounded like a, a one of these pianos with uh, thumbtacks on the hammers. He played guitar in a, <clears throat> in a way I'd never seen before. So, uh, in April of 65, we had this uh, session and lay down all these tunes that are 25 years, 30 years, 40 years later, there's still some sort of interest in. I picked the name Fugs from Norman Mailer's uh, Naked and the Dead, and we were an immediate success. And the audience was on 
partially confused and partially enthusiastic. And um, a couple of people were... It's still that way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In late 64, Ed Sanders had a place called the Peace Eye Bookstore on East 10th Street. Among other things that went on there was um, Sanders sold various literary artifacts like his own publication. Fuck you, a magazine of the arts. Anyway, Peace Eye Bookstore was... Hmm wasn't here. We could sing about anything we wanted, and folk music did too, sung about whatever it wanted. So our early songs were uh, uh, frankly about sex and about Frank's sex and about Frank. Weber came over one day and said that Sanders and these guys uh, wrote a bunch of filthy songs and they were having this, starting this filthy song group. Songs like, like Bull Tongue Clit and Coca-Cola Douche and some got us from the Lower East Side, and all these fine pieces of musical endeavor. Although this is kind of a new building, maybe it was here, maybe this is where the Peace Eye Bookstore used to be. Maybe this is where the Peace Eye Bookstore used to be. This one and the Fugs First album have me and Weber on them as well, and I quit playing with them, which uh, I regret having quit playing with them at this point, but that was what happened. Well, we can safely assume that the Peaside Bookstore and, and even the building that held it is quite possibly no longer. The upping of the Vietnam War began in 65, so we responded to that by doing a cross-country tour, the Fugs, and Weber was along for that and back. Then he, he was no longer a member of the Fugs uh, by the end of 65. We had this gig at Carnegie Hall. We were playing with Pete Seeger, and it was a real glorious opportunity for us, and he didn't show up. And so that was one factor. And then uh, the other factor was he would occasionally fall asleep in gigs, which using his guitar as a pillow. So <laughs> he's the only human being I ever saw who as a remedy for a toothache, took LSD. <laughs> I have the world in my hands at this very moment. I'm sitting on top of the world. Weber rule. Time now for our discovery of the week. Well, what's their name? Uh, the Holy Modal Rounders. Ready, fellas? A one, a two, a three, a four. We were on Latin? Yeah. No. Yeah. I don't remember any of this. <laughs> it's like, what kind of drugs were we on? Well, um... Rowan was... and Martin's laughing? Yeah, yeah, we did. Got the right string baby, but the wrong yo-yo, and they wouldn't let us finish the song. <laughs> they, 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 they... <laughs> Just to think we were on the verge of fame. Well, the first time I heard uh, the Holy Modal Round was probably like most people. It was the Easy Rider soundtrack, and If You Want to Be a Bird. As I was editing it and going to the studio over this year period that I edited it, I would hear songs on the radio, and uh, I would take them off. Uh, you know, the uh, uh, Born to be Wild, Steppenwolf's thing, and, so, and uh, Jimi Hendrix, uh, and the Birds. So then I heard uh, the Holy Modal Rounders, and uh, 
I heard that Sam Shepard, it was Sam Shepard's group, was what I was told at the time. And I love, so you want to be a bird, which is right after Nicholson. Do you have a helmet? Yeah, boy, do I have a helmet. And uh, we next cut is... Uh, you want to be a bird. sound uh, and, and it stands out and it stands out in the movie I just heard it I mean it just sounded right to me and you know see I want to be a bird I mean it just looked right with Jack going you know doing his his monster act it just seemed to be the right thing was their moment right then if they had been able to capitalize on that well, they would have been two very very wealthy men but somehow or other it just didn't happen the way i look at it now it was really the end of the positive time and just before the nightmare sort of set in that the drugs really became people became addicted drugs weren't free anymore you had to actually buy them i mean you know it, it, it things changed around that period too when we hit the 70s, things had totally changed, I felt. You had a tune on, uh, what, Easy Rider or something? Yeah. Huck, where's your limousine, man? <laughs> I never got any money for it. Yeah? Didn't that record sell? The record sold, but it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's a, a long story. It's, it's a probably, long story. Probably signed it's a, a long release. story, yeah. right. What money means to me? Good times. It's just, because I'm a hedonist. You know, I mean, like uh, carpe diem, all that kind of stuff. If I got it, spend it. It might sound foolish to y'all, but uh, <clears throat> so it goes. Even if you ain't got one yourself, you can break into a party and make it your own. And that is the truth. And that's what I've been doing all my life. If there ain't no if there ain't no party happening, make a one of you. Ain't that right? Ain't that right? If you're thinking of losing your mind, and I know you already have more. If I find your lost mind anywhere near my mind, I'm claiming it by almost half on. Claiming that I already have that. It's my life, and I'm going to do it the way I, the way I want to, right? Whether I wind up broke and dead in the street or something, that don't mean a whole hell of a lot to me. I've, if, if I drop that on the spot, I've had my fun. Fennel, you can eat this. Steve really knew how to have fun. Peter had fun in a different way. It was controlled, very controlled. Weber, on the other hand, was physically powerful and mentally, mentally agile and powerful. Therefore, he was a great vehicle for partying because nobody, nothing that he took was ever enough. Weber is obviously a person of enormous charm, uh, 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 supernatural charm, I would say, almost. <laughs> I love being famous, brother. Do I love this? Do I love this? Yeah, I do. Just another day in the life of a musician. Beer and ciggies is the rule of the day. This is what happens. You seize the day, and sometimes drunk before noon, maybe not. You play your cards right, that'll happen. Bring on the broads. 
I mean, he has this don't give a fuck attitude that's completely genuine. It's the reason he's lived his life the way he has. Uh, and something attractive about that. Uh, you know, it's a, it, it, uh, it brings you to the brink of something. I'm your happy scrapple daddy. How do you know? I can tell you like your scrapple by the shape of your nose. Thinking round and bristling, the end comes to a point. Every time I ask you something, all you say is oi. Oh, the little lamby star. Vienna sausage is a shame. Chitlins, all them chitlins. They named the club after the song, uh, Euphoria. Big place, too. Anyway, here's uh, to Jean Fisher. That would be my mom. Hi, Mom. Here's one ticket. Poster for a gig at Euphoria. A club that we named after a song on my first album. Love, Steve. Nice little postcard there anyway there is a good picture of dad right there learning to walk with father okay. and there you go that's a nice portrait actually oh what a lady killer eh <clears throat> anyway here's a picture of uh, this is my second this is Essie here um who oh, I miss dearly. I miss them all dearly, of course. And I'm looking pretty slim and trim. I still have that shirt, as a matter of fact. See, I joined in February of 71. Robin had just joined the band before the uh, Good Taste is Timeless record. He wanted to uh, get the band out of New York. He says, if we don't get Weber and Richard out of Manhattan, off the streets, they're going to die, and uh, there will be no band. My mind capsized, I'm hanging to the hole. No, no, wait a minute, that's just my skull. There's a jackhammer rhythm that seems to be ripping up my brain. It feels like a flood of torrential rain, torrential rain. It's all kind of like dismal, you know, back in those days, and still is. The, the bar room, where you play, these aren't necessarily beautiful places. It was pretty dead-ended, so everybody said, okay, and that's when the real separation between Peter and the band and Weber took place. One guy thought about himself, one guy thought about the, the unity, really, really wanted it to be a unity, really, really didn't care. And, uh, and I guess certain, they just had so many so many arguments and so many mental tussles and uh, Weber was always being a, you know, uh, irresponsible as it were, just a wild child on the streets. It went back and forth for a while and then when the rounders went to Europe, Peter basically stopped playing with us. He couldn't go and when we got back we just started taking off west and around so he's wasn't in the band for a while. A little more, a little more. Um, oh, that was great, except you left out part. Yeah. <coughs> I just did it. You did not. I just did the dance song. Well, you left out the E part, which makes the, yeah. you know. Oh, wasn't there. By the way, does everyone go to E minor? It goes to E minor, yeah, E minor. Uh, uh, Damn song, anyhow. <laughs> 
Whoever, you're left out of part. Come on. You're I mean, what? It's, 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 not, it's, it's, no, it's not anyone else's far, far, fart fault that, that you left out the B part of the song. We have a tape of it if you want to listen. What key part of it? The B what? part, B part, you know, the, the E minor. The E minor, where it goes to the E minor. We have a tape of oh, it. Oh, and if Storm and Storm. Yeah. 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 Now we're good. Let's Storm try it again. Strife. See, we, we got sent to Europe. We spent three months over there without Peter. And when we got back, it was, okay, here we are back here. We're playing the same old rotten scumbag joints, you know, the same rotten little stinky bars that we had been playing before. And it says, no, there's got to be something different. Down in the island where the weather's hot, when she's around, the heat's forgot. Where she sits is 10 below. She's even too cold for an Eskimo. Cold ass of a Sweetheart of the islands, but so cold. Da 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 da. Cold as a woman, cold as a woman. She's a sweetheart of the islands, but so cold. If you kiss her behind the ears and then you kiss her behind the ears again, you'll be very, very sorry for the thing you do when your nose turns purple and your lips turn blue. We made no money, and we remembered Portland, good place to be based out of. You could you could make an, enough money to to live just staying there, but it's you could go down to California, you could go up to Seattle, and every once in a while you can go around the country and good spot. We ruled that town. God, it's the biggest one horse town I've ever seen in my life. And. See, the whole town seemed to be waiting for us. They welcomed us with open arms, right? Hey, man, where you been, man? It was pretty permissive up here. First of all, Weber and Richard thought they'd died and gone to heaven. Because in New York, they, they had to hustle all the time to get heroin, and, and they'd make their own needles out of, like, basketball needles. You know, they'd file down a basketball needle and put it on an eyedropper, and it's expensive and, the, and the, they're always getting hustled and having to hustle back and up here you could get such clean heroin and you could go to fred meyers and buy bags of of brand new needles for like three dollars you know like for 20 of them they liked it up here i had become really fed up with playing with weber after the oregon move because when we managed to hook up a couple of times he was just stupidly drunk and it was disastrous and really not fun but when he came back to uh, New York in 1996, people were asking me, are, are, you, are you guys going to play together? We never saw you guys play together. I thought, well, got to do it at least once. It was just you know, absolutely no question the right thing to do. And um, we played at the bottom line, and uh, it, was, uh, it was enjoyable. My favorite men are the sailors. I take them on for free. Cause there's something about a sea frame that, that brings out the animal in me. So I'm fucking sailors in Chinatown. Fucking sailors in Chinatown. Down in Chinatown, fucking with the sailors. Now ain't this a beautiful world? <laughs> yeah. Loud Wainwright. Yeah. Oh, it's you, man. I didn't I'm right recognize you. Man, I'm all right. The third, of course. The third, yeah. You're the you first. You gonna stick around? Well, I heard the first show. I gotta go home now. Oh. But I love the first show, and I'm gonna dream about it. <laughs> it was getting a little scatological there for a right. second, but. <laughs> oh, anyway, film crew here. Say it. This is Lyle Wayne right the third. Blah, blah, blah. I'm Steve Weber, of course. He's Steve Weber. Yeah. Long time. <laughs> you Steve. sure are, man. Portland was the last time I saw you. Yeah, I'm back again. You know, it goes on and on. You know? I had to make a change in my life, you know, because my second wife had left me, and I woke up one morning, and uh, I, woke, and I woke up in the middle of the night, and I, I thought, I thought Essie, my second wife, was there in the bed beside me, and I, I was like holding her in my dreams. And I, I came to, and I was holding a half gallon of vodka, and I went, "Whoa, this is, this is not a not a good thing." And at that time, I was doing crack and stuff like that too. 
and a few other things too. But so, like, things were going to hell in a handbasket, so I figured I'd better bolt and go back home to Bucks County before things got way out of line. So every once in a while, uh, I'll have a shot of something, but rarely, rarely. It's mostly beer in, beer in these coffin nails, you know, so. Uh. Like, Buckingham is not just a tiny little spot on the map. It's actually in Buckingham Township and stuff. So now you got a whole bunch of what we call baby boxes, right? I mean, it's supposed to be quaint with all the pretty things. And the next thing you know, you got all this prefab coming in. I know I'm sounding like an old curmudgeon or like, all right, times ain't what they used to be and crap like that. But in actuality, they can make them a little bit prettier. You know? I mean, they're all the same color. Wow, wow. So are the people. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, huh? Yeah, I miss hearing boobs a lot. Let's hear it. <laughs> you want me to still sing? do that one? You gotta be into it. This ought to be good. This ought to I forget how it goes. Oh, it, it's, it's easy. It's easy to learn. Okay. okay. This is good queen fun, okay? Whoever, there's no such thing as good queen fun when you're involved. I know. Girl! Girl, <laughs> Are you guys you gonna know sing me in too. a circle? You know me already. All right. <laughs> One, two, a one, two, three, four. Do you like boobs a lot? Yes, I like boobs a lot. Do you like boobs a lot? Do you like boobs a lot? I like a boob a lot. Really like a boob a lot. Oh, I like a boob a lot. Down in the locker room, it's just a weed of all. I'm beating down the locker room with all that noise. Come, won't you walk with me, Griselda? Where in your dress that moonlight shines through? I am a sad and lonely boy. Since your mother said I couldn't see you slipping through the woods in the dark of the night, calling to the moon up yonder. Oh, Lady Moon, won't you shine your silver light and lead me to my Griselda? When we published this album, people were razzing me because they said when I took this picture, Weber was exposing himself, and I didn't realize it. I was three feet from him. And it's true, he did expose himself during the session uh, numerous times, but not during this shot. Actually, that in his hand, I think, is either a matchbox or a lighter, which, if that was really him exposing himself, it'd be kind of sad. But... When I first got to meet Peter, at times he was still taking speed. He stopped taking speed. Speed was always periodic, at least when I knew, knew him in the 70s. Um, he and Antonio would take a shitload of, of methadrine, and then they'd basically be like psychotic aliens in their apartment for a week. And anybody who visited them was like going to Mars. I mean, one night Antonia buttered two pieces of blue paper and put them in the toaster and almost burned the apartment down. It was a very wild time, and um, I got to the point where I realized that if I was gonna hang around with Peter and Antonia, when they were speeding, that something really bad was going to happen to me. And so I basically told Peter that, you know, it, it, it was fine. When he wanted it, whatever he wanted to do, he could do, but I really couldn't be around it. And um, without ever meaning to suggest he do this, he offered to stop taking speed. And I could tell from the way he offered it that he really wanted an out. He just really wanted to stop doing this. And then slowly over the course of the next year, Peter and I just sort of fell in love and there was nothing anybody, um, anybody had been planning and um, it caused enormous unhappiness for all three of us and um, eventually Peter moved out and moved in with me, um, which was a very tough time for all of us. But um, obviously, time tells, and here we are now, what, 26 years later. So. It's kind of funny because since my dad, you know, was a musician in like the 60s and 70s, like he knew a lot of people, and you know, people in my generation think that's really cool. Like I have like random people that I don't even know coming up to me in the hallways of my school saying like, is it true that your dad opened for Pink Floyd? And like things like that. Or like, is it true that like Bob Dylan lived with him for a week? In seventh grade, we had to um, send in this like, we had to pick our favorite musician. 
write an essay about them and send in their music. And I picked Dad. And basically when I played their music, everyone was like, oh my god, I listened to your dad's music? He sucks! <laughs> Don't ever let a bad boy steal your heart away. Too Much Fun is the album that Peter and Steve made after not working together for many years um, because Webber was in Oregon. But uh, at this point, he had returned to the East Coast, so he was back on the East Coast, and that was this was their sort of revival, renewal. It was, you know, he was completely willing, and it was and it was easy and and, and joyful. And I thought, oh, well, this is this is, um, you know, I wouldn't mind doing this again. And we're going to do a, a, a Western tour. Oh, yeah. No shit. You guys are? Too. It's a little confounding from time to time. There's so much logistics involved, like who's where, who's carrying what, where's the freaking guitar, you know, all these details, right? So I don't, I'm not gonna let that bring me down. I'll let them figure it out. Just get me to the church on time, you know, just <laughs> put the guitar in my hand. I'll do it. I don't want to hear about like how much gas is in the tank or where the even where the place is, even. Check, is it? I yeah. think you're good. Yeah. Good. yeah. Nancy, yeah. get out there. The ants are ah, waiting geez. for you. Jeez. That's right. Oh, right. 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 What's it been like being around her, Dave? Well, once you get past the, uh, the utter humiliation of it all, there's some fun to be had. I'm center stage right there. What you want? Right now, here's the thing. You see, you're looking over there, you know? Yes. But, you know, like, like it's, it makes sense, front and center, you know? It, it, I mean, but the thing is, it's wrong. It's totally fucking wrong, okay? So you got to think that, that, that wrong is right and right is wrong. I know it's hard. It's hard. It's a big step, you know? But what you want to do is turn <laughs> towards the corner. And then I'm over here, and I can get not only, not only can I watch and the what'll help. <laughs> what'll help? What'll help this whole thing? <laughs> Wait, you guys move it back. That? Ba yeah, yeah, like, right, yeah, circle. back, exactly, exactly. I was thinking the same thing, that, that actually the, the singing people actually have to be further back. You're right, you're right. I was thinking that, come on, back. Back it over here, right here. Oh, back here, heel, heel. Back it up, mule. Back it up, mule. Hey, hey, let me do it. Yeah, no, you're right. doing it wrong. <laughs> come on. Did you hear about the great dildo heist? 
<laughs> they're, they're like, like, you haven't heard this one yet. I'm li living in uh, L.A., right? And they're uh, right on the corner, right near the Paramount Studios, right? The Paramount Film Place. It says Evco Film Library, okay? Turns out they were making dildos, right? And they would put the seconds, you know, the ones, you know, the, the one working for they would put them in the garbage can. So, so we put this, we put these things on the coat rack, right? So it's like a whole bunch of these dildos and stuff like that on the coat rack. <laughs> Apparently, somebody robbed the dildo factory there, and we got busted for it, right? And you got jacked up for for rustling dildos, <laughs> right? Can you imagine? <laughs> it's been the story of my freaking life, right? <laughs> But they were seconds. They weren't the, the real thing, right? Did you tell them that? I couldn't talk to the fucking rookie cops. Me, you kidding me? They're all hell bent to make points. You know? Take me to your leader. Take, Lead me to take your taker. Me. <laughs> oh, fluke! <laughs> tell us, Google. What is the secret of life, Mug One? <laughs> you are. <laughs> yeah, man. I got your message and all. You look great. Yeah, well, you're a little heftier than well, I you know, Look at it. Prosperity. Let me see. Let me see. Oh. I got. The, I took the tattoo off, though. I've got it expunged. Well, I had that red legs tattoo on the front. Would you get a laser beam to take it off? Or no, something? I had another surgery for a gunshot. And they just took it off while they were Where'd there. Where'd you get shot? Sit down here. I managed them throughout a, a tour of the Northwest, the rowdy bar circuit. Just managed them was like herding snakes. I mean, that was the deal, you know. Someone said tonight they wondered when Weber was if he was going to complete this tour, and I said, well, he never crashes until the money gets real good. You know, that's. When, when the producer shows up who's got the big checkbook and says, I'm going to make you boys a big star, and that whoever just leans forward on the stick and puts it in the dive position. You know. I learned a song in Berkeley. No, no, no. What? I don't remember. We've got to play it tomorrow. We have, we have to learn the song for tomorrow. Come on, you can do it. Not do this on stage. Come on, come on. Thank you very much. We, we, we had this discussion in our band meeting about what songs we were going to do, and everyone said, yeah, going to Memphis, a good choice for the third song. You were there, he agreed. Ladies and gentlemen, he agreed. You reneging mother. <laughs> Give me a little wall to leave on. Wait, 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 wait,
Take it easy on the off course, please. Just, just slow down. Right, David. Enough said. Enough said. Reverend hardly ever forgotten anything he's ever read, you know. He's smart. He's smart. That's the reason I came to see him. I wanted too much bats. <laughs> yeah, it looks like I forget things, but I, it seems like, uh, you know, giving a couple beers, it actually brings back the thing to me again. Well, you get right? a little drunk, or you're kind of subdued, you know, from the way I remember you. Well. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm an excitable boy, you know. I, yeah, you're pretty peaky looking. Right? Aren't you the least <laughs> guitar player for the Fugs? I'm uh, Barry Melton. I played with you for. Oh yeah, there you uh, go, Barry Melton. I remember Steve. you. Sure. We had just started then. Yeah. That was the first Fugs cross country yeah. tour, I think. Well, the first time I ever laid eyes on them, there I was asleep at the Carson City Hot Springs Resort. Save Weber's <laughs> life that night. You remember? Uh, you've saved his life many times. Well, that was the first day I met him, though. A lot of people never forgave me for that. Yeah, I just get strung out once in a while, but, you know, it happens to the best of us. At least I didn't kill my damn fool self. But then the new CD came out. We get reviews in Rolling Stone and New York Times and Spin Magazine and a whole bunch of other other alternate uh, music uh, magazines and stuff like that. And so here we go. We're back on the road again, you know. So I love it. It's a bit of a surprise, but I love it. asking for two of your most mysterious, amazing gifts. First, the gift of energy, and second, the gift of joy. We are asking, we are asking, we are on our knees, we are on our knees, energy, joy, please, energy, joy. I stand tall. <laughs> thing of course you know, in keeping active in a field that can only marginally support life as we know it is not to get distracted you may have to go out and take a day job you may you know, do all kinds of things like that from time to time to make ends meet and for most people uh, doing that eventually will uh, shift their focus. The rounders have never lost their focus. For them, the real thing is the music. And uh, that's not going to change now. <laughs> it's too, too late. <laughs> what can I tell you? This is my typewriter. This is my computer. This is my water. Here's my tape. This is uh, my hostage look. I wrote here since 1981. I worked for my wife, who is my boss. And um, I do some manuscript reading. I answer letters. I help with the catalog. I help with inventory. I do basically office gut work. Uh, Xerox manuscripts when it needs to be done. I don't really have a, a trade. I don't have any, any kind of skill. I don't have any money-making <laughs> talent whatsoever. Uh, I supported myself at the poverty level in, in, in music uh, between 1960 and, um, oh, 1977, about. And if I didn't work for Betsy, my wife, I really couldn't have any <laughs> anything above the level of, uh, you know, temp work. Peter's done a remarkable thing as a person. Late in life, he uh, figured out a way to have something approaching a normal life. He looked back on his, uh, his drug-saturated life, and he has a great attitude toward it, which is that he doesn't reject it. He speaks of speed as having been a learning tool. He says, except that 
I learned everything I had to learn from it by 1969. I didn't stop taking it until 1976. <laughs> and yet he hasn't straightened that at all, because that isn't who he is. And you know, a lot of people who, who get off those substances, they become really boring. It's certainly not an uncommon pattern. But a measure of Peter's vitality is that he hasn't become really boring. He's still incredibly fruitful. He loves music. He's got all this music stashed away that has never been released. Some of which I bet is really good. I don't like Ike or watch TV. I ain't no goddamn bourgeoisie. I ain't no chump and I ain't no fool. I'm a total essence of Charlie Cool. The Lower East Side. I left for kicks. I left for fun. I fought the fifties and I won. This is any uh, portent of the future. We're gonna kick butt big time, right? I think we can do this thing. Really, uh, big time, blah, blah, blah. Let's do it. Let's, as, as I kept saying for the last couple of days, let's light this candle, right? Let's do it. Boobs a lot. An erotic animation festival. Yeah. That's fell forever. <laughs> well, it ain't blasphemy. <laughs> Maybe you're wondering why I came here. My actual plan uh, was to have uh -oh. five new songs. Uh, what, does, what does this for I say, I say five new songs. Oh, okay. Yep. 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 Worked out. Well, I'm sitting right here. All right. Uh, I don't know, because the fan's right here. And I tend <laughs> to get hot when, right yeah. Here. And I, I get hot when I play anyway, because I have to concentrate and my pores open up and God knows what all, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Poor you. Oh, poor, poor, poor me. This is 19-year-old Weber. See this one? Maybe younger, I we just talked about it. You look 19, okay, you see that one? Yeah, that, 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 that's. That's how he looked when I met him. How could I not fall in love? I never really made a decision that was going to be my career or anything like that, you know. I, you kind of leave it up to the fates, you know. And, uh, you know, my mom's an artist and dad was an artist too. Apparently a bit of a, a tippler and a bit of a philanderer. My, uh, my grandmom said that I'd be just like him, and to a large degree, I <laughs> kind of am, you know, it's kind of a traveling man, blah, blah, blah. Artists, you know, who can go figure, right? So, um, I mean, I just remember being around artists all my life, you know, so. What were Steve's uh, interests as a small kid? Oh, he was going to the moon through a closet. I had to convince that this is the rocket ship. <laughs> you and me, honey, we'll go. <laughs> we can launch it right through the roof or something, you know? And she believed it implicitly, of course. You know, what a trusting soul. I thought he'd be a scientist. Well, fooled you, huh? <laughs> We're talking about your, your, your mother's amazing telephone voice. And you like? Yeah, like when, when, when I first heard it in, in, in the 60s, both Antonia and I were talking about the fact that she, she has the sexiest telephone voice we've ever heard. Either one. Runs in the family. 
Yes, yes. Yeah, I like it when I get a little gravelly around the edges. See, I got this natural lisp thing. Gets it's it always time. about you, isn't it? You bet. <laughs> hey, I changed my life. <laughs> stay-at-home kind of gal and she's been very nice to me over the years and uh, but every once in a while she'd come out and see the shows and I, I don't know whether she quite know knew what to make of the whole thing <laughs> right I mean I mean can you imagine right <laughs> I mean enough said right my mom's an artist and stuff you, you, you all know that It'd be really great if she did another portrait, because you've seen all the portraits of me here and there around the house. It'd be really great if she could do one last swan song or one you know, final portrait of me and all kinds of stuff. I think that would be interesting, to say the least. It takes a little effort, I know, at her age and blah, blah, hell, she's 83. And I don't even know what I would do. I was 83, you guys. I'm, 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 like I'm pushing 57 pretty hard as it is, you know. <laughs> Brings a tear to the eye a bit. You know. and, and, and you'll sing lead on it. I will do that. Excellent. Yeah, I'll do that. If I can, if I don't cry in the middle of it. <laughs> you know. I'll do that. When the Beatles hit, uh, it became obvious that we had some kind of a small chance of making some level of success. I really felt that uh, me and Weber were going to be huge, and, and, and something amazing and new and fresh was going to happen to music, and, 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 and it would be us. Weber's idea was, well, you know, he'll, he'll we can play, but you know, nothing's going to happen. And Weber didn't want to rehearse. He says, I don't like to rehearse. And there's a reason for that. The truth is that if he's going to force it, I ain't going to go for it, right? It's just, as, it's, it's as simple as that, right? I mean, I'm willing to learn, hey, blah, blah, blah. He says, oh, we have to do this right now. I mean, this doesn't work. And the more you push it, the more I'll, I will, I won't resist. It's passive resistance. I'll just wander away somehow. Far across the deep blue water. Yeah, 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 really. Did I do right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, doing, we're, we're doing a no, two, two, two songs, two, two songs for the price of one. I know all that. Okay, here we go. Far across Water, we know. daughter, German's daughter. Oh, she was. Oh, wait a minute. Sometimes I was just here saying you wanted to get us down to Baltimore and Washington in one. Uh, yeah. In one thing. Well, that would that would be fine. Mm -hmm. That'd Did be a back to, to back. Wasn't, wasn't he talking to you? Um, Godfrey Daniels. We should call them up again too. Well, actually, I did, and they're. I said that they've. They're very sorry to say this, but that Weber guy is too, 
Yeah. Weberish, as they said. Oh well. Fuck it. I'm not sure what you did to who to make them think that. I can't imagine. And I didn't ask. I haven't cha changed. I haven't changed. It's the same thing. I really didn't think you were that obstreperous at Ed mm -hmm. Godby Daniels. Not at all. Oh well. Fuck. That's too bad. I mean, the two of them, obviously, if they leave each other alone, could do great things, but they, uh, I don't know, there was a lot of, there was a lot of weird tension that I didn't understand and I didn't really want to understand, you know. I do think that Steve uh, has abiding feelings for Peter, uh, just as Peter has abiding feelings for Steve. But I think they also have a lot of animosity. <laughs> Who's older are you two? Who's the brother? I'm older. He's my brother. We're actually non-blood brothers. Non-blood brothers. Oh, Weber, absolutely. Yet, We've shared a lot of blood together over the course of years, actually. What's your name, by the way? <laughs> Punching each other in the mouth. Hey, stop putting me down. I'm not putting you down, except for you forgetting. I'm, not, I'm making sure what you don't forget ever, ever a fucking again. To business. Back to work. Work business. I know, I know, I know you don't like those words. I know those words. No, I know. You find them disturbing. I try I, to avoid them at all. I realize that, and I'm sorry to bring those words up, knowing your sensitivity. As, Maybe. as intimately as I do. Yeah, right. Those, that'll be the day. But anyway. <laughs> all right. So, uh, so what you want? Well. Uh, I want, uh... What you got in mind, Peter? Let's start with STP. Yeah, I know. And that's supposed to be losing the bottle. No, I was thinking about, uh, either fucking sailors in Chinatown or, uh, what's the other one? Uh, random violence, because I think I can sing random violence. I think I'm a bit more menacing than you are. Oh, you think you can sing my song better than I do? <laughs> that, that must be why you steal so many of them. And claim authorship for so many of them. <laughs> okay, you can do that, sure. Random B. I'll steal my. I don't appreciate that comment, Peter. Well, um, um, then why did you tell uh, Stolman that you wrote all those songs that you didn't write? I wrote you even... these things. We listen here. I didn't want to get into this because this is a, a nice weekend, okay? <laughs> you didn't want to talk about stealing my songs. No, I didn't want to talk about business. What belongs to this <laughs> business? You theft is business. It is if you're a thief. <laughs> if you don't want to have this conversation right now, that's okay. Anyway. See, the thing is... Look, see, you're let, stealing let, songs to me and you're angry at me. Huh? I'm not stealing songs Explain to Explain that to me, Kingfish. Listen to you to me here. Stolman gave me this list of songs with credits for it. He says, Steve said he wrote these following songs. I want to run it by you. While well, this stuff... It's vague to me because it happened so freaking many years ago. I mean, like, I did a lot of the arrangements. You did some of the words. I mean, w without we all of this, <laughs> Weber, without we're all of this, it would, it would have never happened in the first place, uh, okay? Uh, not not so. A song is written. Not so. Okay, great. So written. you did it all. Okay. I mean, seriously, like... don't get me all cranky here. I mean, like, so. See, so I'm so, not so getting you cranky. The whole thing is a collaboration. Cranky. It's a collaboration, okay. So something called nitpick. I mean, what, was ask or remember ASCAP or uh, BMI or something? I mean, who's gonna check on this stuff anyway? The way I figure it, it's a collaboration. We we can own up to what we own up with. And I love I love being collaborated with you for Lord knows these many years. Well, no matter, but let's not together. get all let's not get into this infighting crap, which I didn't want to do this weekend. Well, then let's drop it. Period. Let's drop it. Good. Okay, so the next song is one of mine because you're doing random violence, although that was one of mine too. 
Well, that's neither here nor there. No idea where I'll play it. T song. When everybody gets along in a band, it seems like it gets boring after a while. Everybody agrees on everything, and everybody goes along, and you wind up getting in this rut, you know. But um, that never happened with the Rounders. <laughs> it was either all or nothing, you know. Yeah. Mr. your tasty fingers. They like ravioli. I'm packing merchandise that is fine recorded product for the 40th anniversary, as it turns out, a Holy Modal Rounder reunion. Uh, when this was planned, I wasn't thinking of the fact that this was the 40th anniversary, and I realized last week that it's the 40th anniversary to the month. And I'm assuming that we'll start out with, with me and Weber playing by ourselves, uh, which will be interesting. Uh, in which I'm actually looking forward to. What I would like to do is have this rounder reunion be a twice a year occasion because uh, our time grows more finite, especially in, well, you know, who, who knows? But we Weber uh, has um, uh, astounded many people by his um, survival considering but, you know, who knows? Take me back to Random Canyon where the griffins always riffin' And the unicorn is horny in the spring Where the crystal coyote calls over sleepy garden walls And the wireless wombat wanders on the wing And the wireless wombat wanders on the wing Things are so cheap here. It is, uh, you can park the bus on the street and there's fruit growing on the trees. and Usually you can see five mountains from here. You can get along quite well. Rents were really cheap. Yeah, this is uh, the top of Freak Mountain here. Back in the olden days, I mean the 60s and 70s, before it all got built up up here, uh, it was a lot of weirdos up here. You know, hipsters and weirdos who just sort of hid out up here and rarely went to town. It's been pretty crazy. Uh, things have died down quite a bit since, uh, you know, uh, yeah, a lot of the folks have either sobered up or died, I guess. Moved out, got forced out by high rents and stuff like that. So uh, this is one of the last spots where there's no rent. And uh, we get to stay here. Yeah, get to stay here so far. I mean, uh, they haven't thrown us out yet, so. I believe I'll never leave, and I know I'll never grieve when I go back to the canyon that I love. Other canyons aren't as deep, their walls are kind of seep. You can take your other canyons and go shove. You can take your other canyons and go shove. We played I'm Bumper Shoot up in Seattle, me and Weber. We showed up at the stage and there was like maybe 20 people there that were, were, had things to throw because they, they couldn't, they said that they were gonna give whoever was gonna call themselves, call himself Steve Weber. They were, Cause they, they were absolutely certain that he wasn't alive anymore and somebody was using his name. And they were ready to throw things at whoever got on stage, but it was Weber, and they just went, my God, he's still alive, you know? So there's always that, um, there's always that, there's always been that. Um, and it continues to this very moment. <laughs> we don't know where he is. He's gone, he disappeared. As far as I know, um, he was at home a couple of days ago, 
he missed the he missed his plane uh, to come out here, and he's just not. Nobody knows where he is. Nobody knows where he is. Uh, he got on the bus to New York, but never made it to the airport, and nobody knows. Okay, I got the first precinct number. Oh, hi, uh, my name is Peter Sanfel, and I've got a rather strange story for you. Um, I'm in Portland, Oregon right now, and uh, I'm, I'm in Portland, Oregon. Uh, I live in lower Manhattan, and I'm out here for a band reunion, and uh, my partner who lives in Pennsylvania was supposed to have flown out here uh, on Thursday. And I know that he uh, has, is extremely eager to get out here. It's, it's, it's kind of you know a big deal. It's our 40th uh, um, anniversary. And um, he went on uh, Wednesday night to his girlfriend's house in Brooklyn. And uh, he never got on the plane. He was a no-show for his flight, which is supposed to happen on Thursday. And um, we, uh, his, his girlfriend, uh, uh, no one answers the phone there. And we're worried that, that, that something's happened to him. Uh, and there's nothing that we can, uh, well, I don't know whether it's appropriate for, for you guys to uh, go to the house and see whether he's okay. Uh, is this, uh, I know I it's, it, it's a really gray area, but we're, we're kind of desperate and, and I can't think of anything else. Uh, that we could do at this point. Hello? You're saying that, that there's nothing you guys can do? Okay. Well, thank you. met you guys down in California. I was walking around saying, gee, I hope this, I hope Weber gets out to the West Coast again, because it was looking to me like this might be his last. I hadn't seen him for a while, you know, and uh, that's, you know, he's, like he's going down pretty heavy, pretty hard here, you know. Uh, we all, you know, you guys are young, you know, but as a, after a certain point, it seems like it's your mission to lo go eliminate, eliminate whatever destructive elements you've, in you've incorporated in your life and start dropping them to the side for survival. And Steve hadn't caught on to that one yet. Peter's caught on to it for many years now, and he's looking better than he did a couple years ago in California. He's, you know, beautiful. I regret, I regret. To inform everyone that Steve Weber is not here. Okay, we don't have Weber here, but I have his shoe. Oh, no, no, no. 
we do a reunion I, I think there's a really good chance it's going to be the last and and actually this this reunion even more so you know because of of uh, the, what happened with Steve not showing up although you know the fact that Peter has done so well um, now I'm thinking maybe not you know because Peter's Peter's strong and he's a good entertainer but we're all getting old you know and at some point um, you know, somebody's gonna die or somebody's gonna get sick or, or somebody's not gonna wanna do it or be able to do it. So, so uh, yeah, all these things end. So no one's seen Weber since um, before Portland. He subsequently never ever called with an explanation of why he didn't show up. Um, and uh, in a nutshell, uh, no one's seen him since. He's been staying with his girlfriend, and people have talked to him on the phone. Um, but um, he seems to have sort of gone off the map. Um, I'm not quite sure what his professional plans are, but uh, apparently uh, him and his manager have been talking about him doing a record, uh, a CD. Um, so he is, so it sounds like he's still musically active, which is, which is the main thing. I would like to play with him again in the future. So, well, I've felt that, uh, well, when, when Weber and I broke up in 65, uh, I felt this incredible loss for you know, what we had and the fact that it wasn't going to happen anymore. Uh, and I was, I was devastated for, for a long time. And then we got back together again, and I mean, so at this point, I mean, after after you know, getting together again and breaking up, um, a number of times, uh, the scar tissue does tend to form, and at this point, um, if we never do play again, um, well, it's a case of uh, a really big shame, really too bad, but. Uh, I'm certainly not going to uh, lose any sleep or uh, <laughs> uh, 
uh, rip out my hair or uh, don a, don a, uh, a a hair shirt and flagellate myself and uh, <laughs> gouge out my eyes and refuse to eat. <laughs> Life is way too short. Yeah. Ma's out there, switching in the kitchen, and Dad's in the living room, grossing and a bitching, and I'm out here kicking the gong for you, for you. Euphoria when your mind starts wheeling and a walking, your inside voices start squealing and a squawking, floating around on a melodina cloud singing euphoria, euphoria. Stanfeld, wherever they all just totally transcended, they went over the hill. They're on the other side, as it were. They're into new realm, and it's a beautiful, innocent realm. You know, it's very innocent. Well, that's I don't know. It's worth that, I think. I wonder if what the rounders have to say musically can be taught. It's a feeling more than anything else. The fact that the rounders have kept going in various forms, in, in various ways, and that Peter and Steve have continued to do music for as long as they have, with as little financial reward, or even really, you know, critical reward, I mean, says something about the motivation of, of where the music comes from and the fact that it, you know, it, it's something that they have to do in a way, whether they do it, you know, together or, or you know, battling each other. Bing! <laughs> oh, fate is weird. Fate linked us. Fate linked our paths. And our future as well. Yeah, the whole, the whole, the whole thing, <laughs> the whole shizzle. But um, we gotta get out. We gotta get out of here before the sun goes down. Yeah, this is the last thing we ever do. That's oh, <laughs> you, you, you need foot gear to get out of here. You can't get out of here like that. <laughs> I'm gonna take a spritz. Yeah, I do. I took a spritz this morning. I washed my hair just, just for you, Ben. Real great, thank you. I hate your hands when they're dirty. Oh, some some people like that though. Get down, get gritty. Oh, you always you always did that. <laughs> And moonlight shines through. I'm a sad and lonely boy. Tend your mother, said I couldn't see you. Through the woods in the dark of the night. Gone to the moon up yonder. Holy moon, shining silver light. Lead me to my
So look out the hesitate, please tell me how long I knew I have to wait. Or can I get you now? Or must I hesitate? I was born in Pennsylvania, I was raised in France. I'm a dirty old man and I wear silk pants. Tell me how long I knew I have to wait. Or can I get you now? Or must I hesitate? I'm a jackhammer man in a jackhammer town and a hammer on my hammer till the sun goes down. Tell me how long I knew I have to wait. Or can I get you now? Or must I hesitate? I'll take it slim. Also Tennessee, if you don't like my feet, just stop shaking my tree. Tell me how long I do I have to wait, or can I get you now? I must have hesitated. It's a D for dreadnought, a D for destiny, a D for new G that made a fool of me. Tell me how long I do I have to wait, or can I get you now? I must have hesitated. Got my cycle. In my psychedelic shoes, I believe Lord and Mama got the psychedelic blues. Tell me how long I do, do I have, have to wait, wait? Or, or can, can I get you now? I must have hesitated. 